factory and we'll take a look at one or two other ones that we have here and how they work. Now, to begin with, this one. Now this is how the very first Black Forest clock looked. It was made in 1640 by two farmers. It's a very simple clock, it's got a balance on top, three wooden cogs inside, stones for weights. It's a 12 hour clock, so back then they had to wind these up twice a day by pulling on the string, like so. Now this type of clock, it functioned okay, but it's also got a slight problem. As you can see, there's only one hand on this clock. So when it wasn't on the hour, then they had to guess what the time was. It wasn't too accurate back then, of course. <laughs> now, around 50 years after this, they were making clocks that we call shield clocks. Look like this one here. There were many different variations on these. These are made from pine wood. They're always hand painted. Much more precise because they've got two hands and they have a chime inside. Now, if you watch here, this one has an added function. This is known as the mother-in-law's clock. <laughs> oh. Every half an hour, she starts to hit him. <laughs> one of the reasons why the men in the Black Forest have very little hair. <laughs> now, this one is also a very famous German clock from around the same time. It's known as the Knudelfresser. In English it means the dumpling eater. Every half an hour, he starts to eat his dumplings. <laughs> Yeah. Now, it was also around this time that the first cuckoo appeared inside a clock, and it appeared inside a shield clock like this one here. Whereas the cuckoo clocks, as most people know them, the carved ones, these appeared much later, around about 1850, 1860. This is how an early one would have looked. It's called a train station clock. It was made the time they built the railway here in the Black Forest. On the half hour, they cuckoo one time. On the hour, tells you what the time is, so 12 o'clock and it's 12 times. <laughs> now, the type of wood that we use for the cuckoo clocks or the carvings on the clocks is this. This is basswood. It comes from the lime tree. And this has to be dried for up to four years before it can be carved. It's very moist wood. Once it's dry, it's very soft, and it's easy to carve. The first thing we do is to take a stencil, spray onto the wood the shape that's going to be cut out. Now the pieces are then cut out using the type of saw that we have here. And you can see from this piece here, they just cut around the shaded area on the wood. This is the only part of clock making where machinery is used is to cut the shapes out. Now once the pieces have been cut out, they're then placed onto a board, onto the bench, and then we start to carve. And we carve about ten pieces at the same time. So one cut here, one cut here, one cut here, so on, till all the parts are finished. Now once the carvings are finished, they're then taken to a town called Neustadt. It's around 15 minutes from where we are here. And this is where all the finished carvings are then fitted onto the house of the clock, and it starts to resemble a cuckoo clock, like so. Now, inside the clocks, we have the mechanisms. There's different types of mechanism for different clocks. The first one, the small one here, this is what we call a one-day mechanism. Clocks that have this inside, they have small weights, and you would need to wind this type of clock every day. Now, this will have two weights, one to operate the cuckoo, and one for the clock. The next one is an eight-day. These have much larger weights, and this type of clock you would wind once a week. This one would also have two weights on it. The other two that we have here are one day and an eight day. Now these ones would be in the clocks that have a music box inside. And when it has a music box, then it has three weights. The third one's for the music. And on top of here would be the dance figures turning as it plays. Now, the music box, this is the only part of a cuckoo clock which is not made in Germany. Music boxes are made in the French part of Switzerland. The Swiss, they have the patent for these. So they're the only people in Europe who make these. Nobody else is allowed to do it. And then, of course, we have the cuckoo. Now, we don't use a real bird because they tend to fly away when the door opens. We have two bellows inside the clocks. Very simple. Yeah. Different sizes have different sounds. The larger these are, the deeper the cuckoo sound will be. And once this is all put together, it then looks like this, and you can take a look inside when it's going. 
Mm -hmm. You have the dance figures here. And also, as with most clocks nowadays, there's a switch on them. So when you go to bed at night, you can turn them off. <laughs> now, to this one. This is one of the largest that we have in the store. The clock was first made like this in 1860. This clock, it takes a craftsman approximately eight weeks to make. Now, I'd like to bring you over here. We'll take a look at some of the ones we have on display. Now, on our wall here, we have approximately 125 cuckoo clocks of various shapes and sizes, various different moving parts. We'll just take a look at a couple, beginning with this one here. It's a very special clock. We're the only people in the world who make this clock. Now, the reason it's so special, it's the only clock in the world that has real running water. That's a combination of solar power and battery to operate the pump inside. Everything else on here is powered by the weights. Then we have here what we call the clockmaker's house. This lady at the front, she's wearing the traditional Black Forest costume. Now if you see a lady here and she's wearing a red hat, she's single. When she gets married, then she wears a black hat. <laughs> well, finally, we have this one here. Now, this is a romantic clock. It's known as the honeymoon clock. And we have on the bench here, of course, the happy couple. They kiss every time it plays. <laughs> Now, as your tour leader was explaining to you, you'll find in our store all the prices, they include the German value-added tax, which you don't pay. If you decide you want to buy something here and you spend 50 euros or above, the tax is deducted in the store here, which is 15%, comes off of the price of what you're buying. If you're interested in buying something, you'd like to ship at home, we can ship all over the world, shipping costs they depend upon the weight of what's being sent. And we offer on our clocks a two-year guarantee, and we have service throughout the world. So if you were to buy one and you have a problem, you wouldn't have to find a way to fix it. How big would that box be then? Yeah. 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 What they do is, during summertime, they do not allow the cattle to graze on the plateaus which are on the flat land. They take them up high up on the mountain plateaus. Whatever grass that grows below, they cut it, chop it, save it for the winter. So these bales that you are seeing are the hay stock for the winter. For the cattle. Is it snow, Paranga? Snow. Snow. Which is the answer, Paranga?